Good afternoon, my name is Ruben Cole. I am going to be um, augmenting a section of the manual that's going to come with your inkjet cart solution for the HP DesignJet 3100Z photo machine. I recently purchased this one used on Craigslist. Uh, I got a super great price. It used to retail for about $4,000. I bought one that was barely used, had the original cartridges in it. And I got it for $800. It needed ink. And uh, the guy that I bought it from, I trusted uh, enough to take his word for it. That once I put the ink in it, it would boot and run fine. And um, I did my research before I purchased this machine. Um, the reason I bought it was for the calibration and the color management. Um, two touches of a button and it pretty much um, sinks itself. So with that said, um, the reason I did... Um, purchased this machine was I found one vendor and that was inkjet carts Ross there has been in the business for about 30 years and he's developed a, a multitude of solutions for um, a whole host of um, printer lines and he had that was the only one that had a solution um, a tank system that was internal that um, would work for this machine it's $399 um, within that kit you would get two decoder boards you're going to get the right decoder board you're going to get the left decoder board. You're going to get the replacement tanks. You're going to get a manual. And you're going to get the replacement inks. This is about four times the amount of ink that comes in one of these original cartridges. And these cartridges are $70 a piece. So you can imagine there's um, with 12 cartridges, that's probably $1,000. So if you were to break that down into reality, that's about $4,000 worth of ink. That you're going to be getting for in this package of $399. Um, what you're going to get is high quality inks, and you're going to get everything that you need to install this onto your HP 3100. Okay, so with that said, this manual is um, very helpful, but it's missing some critical components uh, or um, definition on some of the issues that you're going to be coming up against. I'm going to address those issues more than I am about breaking the machine down because breaking the machine down is about a 45 minute process. You're going to need a few basic tools. Um, these star um, bits are very important. I would say get a magnetic uh, extension piece and you've got two different types of screws and um, when you get into the machine uh, you're going to find where I had issues you're going to have issues and this is why I'm making a video for Ross. So with that said, let's just jump right into this and keep this short and simple. Once I had the right and the left cover taken off, I had removed the data communications board, which is in the back here. You're going to have that out. And your machine is going to be broke down and pretty much exposed like this. Um, as soon as you start to install the decoder boards is where you start scratching your head. And this is why I'm making the video. And this will really help you out. So only be concerned with this red-blue line here. It is actually connected to the bus line, which is here. In between the two, when you open the case, you're going to find this little adapter, female, is going to be attached to the red-blue line, and it's going to be also attached to the bus line. That's what puts these two wires together and communicates to your motherboard, which is in your, is in your printer. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the female adapter. We're going to take that out of the system. We're then going to have our, our bus line is going to be hanging free, and our red-blue is hanging free. Do not be concerned about the red-blue. That's only concerning ourselves with the bus line that communicates with the printer. So um, what we're going to introduce is these decoder boards. You're going to get two decoder boards. And what you need to be aware of is the right left. So this is the right side of the machine. This is your right decoder board. And here what you're going to see is like a little switching unit. It is a, a, a triple um, plug-in uh, arrangement. There's a little black cap. You're going to slip the black cap off and you're going to move it to whichever one of these machines is yours. Mine is in the middle. It's the 3100. Sorry about the focus. It's the 3100 and um, you'll see the R on the end of that and that means that's the right board. The right board is indicative of this switch. This switch is only on the right board so you'll know on, in two ways that this is your right board for installation. Um, one being the R and the other one being that it is the only one with a switch on it. The left side does not have that. I'll refer to that right now. So as you install, you're going to do the same process on this side. You're going to be dealing with the, the red-blue. Disconnect, take the female out. 
then you're going to be um, plugging in your left board and it's going to have uh, a switch on it and a decoder board you're going to plug in and that's going to communicate back to your internal motherboard which is back here buried underneath and um, what it's going to do is it's going to uh, do a few things for you which is very important these machines are awesome machines but they had a problem with the original cartridges you have a chip um, somewhere mounted in these and they communicate the level of ink that's in them and the date that these were manufactured what happens with these machines is the computer knows by communicating with that chip in the cartridge how long ago that was manufactured and due to your warranty situation if your cartridges are um, out of date then it um, uh, affects your warranty with the manufacturer which is HP and um, it costs you money for them to come out and repair whatever it is going on so it was a warranty issue but it plagues these machines because every time you boot it'll give you a message that your inks are expired and you know that's not cool you can bypass it but what a pain in the butt so what these decoder boards do these decoder boards actually send a message saying that these ink cartridges are um, within tolerance of uh, expiration so you'll never get that message so that's an awesome solution for these machines the second thing it's going to do is still going to register your ink to uh, let you know how much ink is still in these cartridges these cartridges hold about three times more than this traditional cartridge does which is awesome and you can just top fill them so that is also very cool so you can take your stock inks and you can fill them at will and order them at will um, whatever ones you burn through first you can reorder those with that said let me address um, another issue that um, I ran into really quickly as soon as I started installing uh, or taking the machine apart there's a, a right clip and a left clip they're black and they're tucked underneath the machine and I'll get the face plate off there's one screw buried in the left of the machine there's one screw buried in the front right and you gotta get those out so let me move forward um, those were the big issues um, the one I was resolving problems and Ross was very helpful if you get with him in the morning he'll use a return your phone call from inkjet carts or that day or he'll get with you the next morning if you have a problem so he's very accessible that's what makes this um, product line and his solution so great is um, because you get that support and that support is very critical in some cases because we do want to be able to move forward with our projects um, with that said I booted the machine it has never been through a boot cycle with me because I replaced the inks right away put the decoder boards in this machine was never fired other than to say it's out of ink so I was able to get it to boot and um, I got an error code and the reason I got an error code was because of this unit back here which is your data communications between your computer and the machine so um, I uh, strongly urge you to put that board back in before you do your test boot and put the machine back together because once this is installed you can do your boot process if it's been unplugged for more than 30 days it's going to take about a half an hour for you to um, get the machine to come back online uh, do head cleaning and so on so what happened with me was I was never able to um, verify the machine's operational ability um, because I couldn't get past I didn't have glossifier in uh, my cartridge and it wouldn't let me get past the first three minutes so I never really knew what the machine was uh, capable of so once I'd done all the ink and swapped all that out, put the decoder boards in, I fired it up, I put the communications board in the back, and my panel came on, and I got through the ink recognition, I was firing along, uh, I got about 15 minutes into the boot process, and I'd go get my daughter before I left. I noticed that my belt, my drive belt was looking a little bit shady, in the sense that um, it was a little degraded, and um, it was a little flaky and chalky here, and so... I'm like, well, it's good enough to at least get me through the first boot cycle so I can confirm everything's operational. Um, actually, what happened, I got back, and it was at about um, 80 to 95% uh, through the cycle for the half an hour, and it had about 10% to go. And unfortunately, the belt um, completely disintegrated. So I don't know if you can see that very well here, but um, the belt is completely degraded and it's all fractured and frayed open. Um, so it was a good thing that kind of happened now. Um, I got through the ink boot process, so I know my system is working and the ink solution is working. So I'm good with that. What I did was a little more research. And what I'm going to strongly suggest that you do is you go online to eBay and you buy this high quality USA made belt. And it comes from a vendor in California 
and they um, have a Kevlar reinforced belt. And it's about 40 bucks versus these um, Asian made belts, either um, Chinese or Korean. Uh, for $10, they just disintegrate after about two or three years. They just break down and they're uh, going to shred on you. So save yourself an $800 service call. You can do this yourself. The machine's already about 80% of the way broken down. So you might as well go ahead and order this belt for 40 bucks. Order your tank solutions from inkjet carts and um, do both at the same time. So with that said, I'm going to leave you to it. There is support videos on YouTube for these machines. Um, to change these belts and also the vendor you buy that belt from um, also has a really nice video on how to break these machines apart so um, don't be intimidated um, you only need an average uh, IQ to get in here and save yourself a ton of money and uh, I hope this video has been helpful um, to define the little things that were missing in that general manual uh, because this is a great ink solution I'm gonna go from about five dollars a print down to about 25 to 50 cents worth of ink per print. I'm doing 24 inch wide format stuff. So for me um, to operate this machine um, in an economical way with high quality inks is just a win-win for me. And I hope it's going to be a win-win for you and you see the uh, math behind this. I think that you're going to really uh, enjoy the solution that Ross offers you from Inkjet Cards. So um, enjoy and I see you printing. We'll see you on the other side.